This question says, solve for x and y simultaneously. It's so beautiful right now. While I'm recording this, um, there's a sliding door behind me and it's raining today and I can just hear the, the raindrops outside. I love it. It makes me feel so cozy. And to my left on my table here, I've got a cup of coffee that I've just brewed. Oh, it is, it, oh, it's the small things in life that make me happy like this. Having the rain outside, um, being able to sit in my cozy room like this and make videos for you guys. It's heaven. I love it. So um, this one says solve for X and Y simultaneously. Okay, so what you do is you take the easiest looking expression, which is the easiest looking expression. Well, for me, it would be that one. And you would want to get X or Y alone. So I would look at this Y over here because I don't like this X because it's got a two there. And that means we're gonna have to use division and blah, 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 blah. So I'd rather take this Y and try to get it alone. That It doesn't matter if you get it onto the right-hand side or onto the left-hand side. So I'm gonna take this Y over to the right. So you end up with two X take away two because I took that two to the left equals two Y. There we go. There are still some learners I don't blame you, it's from the teachers that brainwashed you. I'm not saying teachers are bad, by the way, I'm just saying you get certain teachers that maybe don't understand the work that they're doing as well as they should, and they always say, you have to get the thing that you're looking for on the left-hand side, you have to, okay? And it's absolute nonsense, no you don't. Um, so here we have y by itself, so we know that y is then equal to 2x minus two. So what we then do is we take that, and we put that into this expression. Uh, what, Kevin? I don't understand what you just said, bro. Sorry, I said that a little bit quick. Hey? So you see there's a Y here, and you see there's a Y here. Just replace this Y with that, okay? So that's gonna be one over X, take away. And of course, I should be giving like little labels here. So we could call this equation one, equation two, this could be called equation three, and then we could say substitute equation three into equation number two, okay? And so what you end up with now is one over x take away three, and then in brackets, always use brackets when you do this, uh, change it to two x minus two. So you see what I did? I just put that in the place of y, and then that's equal to one. Now we're just gonna go multiply that three into the bracket, so that'll become negative six x, negative three times a negative two just becomes a positive six, equals to one. Um, I'm gonna take the six over to the other side. I mean, there's so many different things you could do right now, but I'm gonna take that six over to the other side. So we end up with one minus six, which is negative five. See the fraction? Whenever you get a fraction, you need to get a lowest common denominator, okay? So the lowest common denominator here, if you think about all of these are over one, then the lowest common denominator would just be x. So let's quickly go rewrite this. One over x, take away six x over one equals to negative five over one. So we are gonna go multiply this by x and what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. We're gonna do it over here. You multiply by x and multiply by x, okay? Ooh, that was ugly. Let me do it again, let me do it again. Okay, so we multiply by x at the top. Let's just rather say dot and dot and dot x and dot x. Why didn't I do anything to this one? Well, because it already has the denominator. Now we end up with one over x, take away six x squared over x equals to negative five x over x. Now I've had learners say, Kevin, why don't we just cancel these x's out now, my bro? And we can do also do it over here. Now technically that's not wrong, but then you're just gonna get back to this position over here and we don't wanna be going in a circle, okay? So the reason we like to leave it like this is because of the following. In mathematics, when the denominators are all the same, you, and you have an equation, you can ignore the denominator. So now you just end up with one take away six x squared equals to negative five x. And there we have some type of equation where we can solve. So we're gonna take all the things to the one side and then make the other side a zero. So you can decide to take everything to the left or take everything to the right, it doesn't matter. I feel like taking everything to the right because then I know that this will become a positive and I just feel more comfortable like that, but it doesn't matter. And then this would be a negative five X and then you'd have to bring this one over to become a negative one, okay? If you took everything to the left, it doesn't matter. You're still gonna get the same answer at the end. 
At this position over here, you have two options. You could either try to factorize this one if you are feeling brave, or you can just do what I'm gonna do and use the quadratic formula. So that's the x equals to negative b plus minus b squared, take away 4ac. Oh, this formula, hey? How many times have we said this formula? And then I remember, I, I bet the first time you ever saw this formula, you were like, whoa, bro. Like, how am I ever gonna remember that? And now it's just like, geez, if someone had to come to me on my deathbed one day and be like, just recite the quadratic formula. I'll say it in like seven different languages. Okay, not really, but you know, we know it pretty well, don't we? Okay, so um, we need to go use that formula now. So remember that this part here is A, um, this part here is B, and this part here is C. Okay, so we're gonna say, ne you see how the formula starts with um, a negative? So just put that negative there. Then what is B? B is, B is a negative five. So put it in a bracket, because you've got the negative negative vibe going on over there. And then you're gonna say plus, um, plus minus, and then you're gonna say square root. And then, oh, okay, if you're so cool, bro, the way you just said vibe, I just, re I just realized I said vibe now. It's not a word I use a lot at all. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> so B is gonna be, negative five squared, I'm running out of space, aren't I? And then A is gonna be six, and then C is negative, oh, come on. Sorry, I'm gonna redo this, because some people are gonna comment and be like, um, so could you maybe just try to do a little bit neater next time? Um, I understand you're doing like a nice favor here for everyone by showing us how to do it, but if you could maybe just, you know, <laughs> in, in in future, maybe just be more considerate with your space. Okay, so to all those people, I'm doing this for you. So if B is negative five, no one's actually ever commented that, that I've actually seen, but I'm just imagining it'll be quite funny if someone did. Okay, so um, plus minus uh, negative five squared, negative four. Um, A is, uh, what is A? Six and c is negative one, and then at the bottom, we have two times a, and a is six again. Okay, go ahead, um, type this all in on the calculator. Obviously, you can only use a plus or a minus, you can't use both, um, so you need to go do this two times, and okay, so if you use a positive at the top, you get an answer of one, and then if you use a negative at the top, you get an answer of negative one over six. Okay, we're not done, guys, because remember we're doing a simultaneous equation, so we have to solve for x and for y. Okay, so I'm just gonna erase a little bit of space now. I'm hoping that most of you have passed that point in this question. Okay, so what we do now is we then take those two answers, which is x equals to one or x equals to negative one over six, and we're just gonna go plug it into this equation here because we're trying to get y. So we could just say that um, y is equal to two times one minus two, my bad. Two times one minus two. You see what we what I did there? I just took that x value and I plugged it into there, okay? So you would end up with y equals to two minus two, which is zero. And then for the second one, it's gonna be two times negative one over six minus two. So I just plugged it into there. And if you had to go do that, you end up with negative seven over three. And so there we have all of our answers. We've got the two x values and we've got the two y values.